What's good homies, I'm glad you made it here. This is Rodder Meme Bet and this is arguably the most comprehensive and profitable betting channel on YouTube. I have experience of betting MMA in the UFC for more than nine years and I'll be here sharing my betting strategy for the upcoming events and in this case I'll be doing the full card predictions for UFC Fight Night 186 or UFC Vegas 20, Gain versus Rosenstrike. This used to be uh, Pro Yuri Prokaska versus Dominic Reyes but the, the fight has been recently uh, bailed so it's gain versus rosen strike right i'll be soon telling how i'm betting this card and give you guys a breakdown please bear with me until the end also if you want to hear the past results before proceeding though this cannot be regarded as investment neither recommendation there is a disclaimer in the description in case you would like to read before proceeding just want to thank you all guys for the support the channel is growing at an interesting pace obviously because i think this is bringing value and uh, you know insight to you guys so consider also supporting the channel by you know sending a international donation for me through paypal or supporting me on patreon there's not much um, you know content there on patreon but at least you know if you guys would like to show your support to keep these videos running that's the way to go right else give this video a thumbs up and uh, if you like what i'm doing here subscribe and share with your friends so like i said this will be the full card predictions for ufc fight night 186 this is basically how i'm betting the card and if you're a returning subscriber you know you know how to read the spreadsheet if you don't there's a link in the description that explain details how to use this all right so real quick how i'm gonna be betting this card my picks and my bets dustin jacoby versus maxine grishing i'm picking jacoby i'm not betting the, the fight sabina mazo versus alexis davis i'm picking mazo i'm not betting the card the fight myra bueno silva versus montana de la rosa picking bueno silva not betting the fight randy brown versus alex Oliveira, picking brown not betting the fight. Alex Caceres versus Kevin Kroom. Picking Caceres, not betting the fight. Thiago Moses versus Alexander Hernandez. I'm picking and betting Moses. This is a low quality bet. You know, uh, I'm not too confident, but I do think Moses is going to win the fight. My total bet will be 2.25%. Ronnie Lawrence versus Vince Cachero. I'm picking Cachero, but I'm not going to be betting the fight. Emily with Meyer versus Hannah Cyphers. I'm picking with Meyer. This is my most confident bet of the card, my most confident pick. 4% of my money. Raoni Barcelos versus Rafael Assunção. I'm picking Raoni Barcelos, but I'm gonna be betting Assunção. So I'm picking one guy betting the other because I think there's a great chance that Assunção comes on top, even though he's not the favorite. So it's a low quality bet, but I'm, I'm gonna be throwing 2% of my money. William Knight versus Alonso Manifield. I'm picking and betting Manifield. Super small bet, least confident bet because you cannot trust too much Manifield, but I do think he's the favorite in this matchup. Megomet. Magomed Ankalaya versus Nikita Krylov. Picking Ankalaev, not betting the fight. Then Yuri Prokaska versus Dominic Reyes. This fight is no longer happening. It was a tricky fight to pick and bet. I was picking Prokaska, but not betting the fight. All right, so on to the breakdown, guys. And in the end, I'll be covering the best results. I'll be trying to do this concise and nice because there are like oh, around 10 fights to cover, right? Yeah, 11 fights. So I'll try to make it two to three minutes per fight. And obviously, drop me your questions. Let me know how you guys are betting so we can make this entertaining. Justin Lawrence, Justin Lawrence, right? I forgot the first name of the guy. Ronnie, Ronnie Lawrence. So Ronnie Lawrence, I haven't seen much footage on him because it's, it was not available to me. He, he looks a very dynamic striker. You know, he likes to use, uh, you know, choose flurry of strikes, but this is patient enough to wait for the counter come with more. You know, good feints, good leg kicks. I like his takedown defense. I like the way he he grapples, you know. So I'm giving him four star overall. But this is the caveat here is that I haven't seen much of him. I'm not rating him on the consistency and experience and game plan part because I saw only one fight, which I was quite impressive. But uh, still, I'm not judging here, neither here, because it was only one fight. I saw the stats on Dana White Contender Series. He took the guy probably like, what, six or something crazy, like nine times, I don't know, something like this. So this guy probably is a good wrestler, so he's probably definitely a great fighter. Also very good record, 11 and one. Vince Cachero is a complete fighter himself. I like the way he, you know, throws his punches. He's a very composed in there, you know, likes to hit angles. You know, again, he comes inside, he slips the shots. He, he keeps a good flow of movements. You know, he has good uh, uh, good defense, not, not an easy guy to hit. Very good takedown defense, tough to hold down. He also grapples a little bit. It's not much his forte, but still he's a very he's a quite good grappler, you know, tough guy to hold down, like I said, and good flow on the on the feet, not easy to hit. 
I like his game plans, his consistency, not that much experience, but still he, sh he shows up as a veteran and he's a very tough guy, you know, he wants to win the fights, he comes forward, he tries, he's not afraid to bang, you know, so this guy is definitely a force as well. Like I said, it's tough for me to call because I don't have much footage on Lawrence, but I would say that Lawrence has to use the range and he's uh, more dynamic striking, take the fight to the ground and Kachiro. So same idea, you know, probably Lawrence is the better wrestler here, so he has to defend the takedowns and do what he does, you know, keep throwing, keep it, keep him busy. I'm taking Kachero, but guys, I haven't seen much footage again, you know, so don't pick this as, you know, a strong pick or something. So this is just Kachero I'm picking by decision. I would be taking maybe this bet here, but again, it's uh, quite tricky for me. All right, on to the next fight, Myra Bueno Silva versus Montana De La Rosa. Bueno Silva is a girl that is, she's very aggressive on the feet. I'm giving her four star on the offensive part because of the aggressiveness. She's also very powerful, you know, very strong one twos, leg kicks, you know, she, she throws with intent. She has a good power, you know, especially being a woman. Defensively, she's not the best. She likes to brawl, but she does get hit. Grappling is not much her thing, you know, even though she can take the girl down, throw some ground pound here and there, try to, you know, pass pass uh, the guard and whatnot, but that's not too much her thing. You know, defensively also not the best, can get an underhook here and there, get back up, but not much her thing, like I said. I don't like much her game plans and her consistency. She basically comes forward, you know, not with not, not much feints, even though she's got the power, I didn't give her five star, because she doesn't feint much, it's quite easy to predict. I'm giving her three stars here on the game plan and consistency. She's also not much experienced, and but she's very, Strong, very powerful, you know, big heart, big will, she's very aggressive. Now, Montella de la Rosa, her problem, uh, honestly, is the striking, you know, especially offensive. She basically comes squared, she exposes her chin, she doesn't have much power. Defensively, she's not that bad, you know, she tries to time the opponent, but she doesn't move much her feet, so I'm giving her three stars, I think it's quite fair. You know, even though I think she's a little bit better counter striker than Bueno Silva. Her thing is the grappling. I'm not giving her fours or five stars here because even though she's quite a good grappler, she doesn't have the wrestling. She struggles to get the fight inside. She doesn't get, you know, body body uh, locks and stuff. But actually her wrestling is quite decent. Let me give her four stars here so it becomes more clear that she has an advantage on this part, you know, because I'm gonna compare Bueno Silva to her. She's definitely the better wrestler. So I think this, at least on this fight has to stand out. Okay, so she's four stars, both on the offensive and defensive grappling. Her game plans are quite good, you know, it's not the, the best, but it's quite decent, you know, she has a good flow on the octagon. And she's a quite tough girl, you know, but she can get hit, she can uh, wear the damage. The chin is not that bad, not the best, even though, like I said, she's quite tough and has the wheel, the heart to win the fights, all right? So it's four star for her here. Bueno Silva, she has to use basically her power, corral her, you know, keep boxing, don't kick much, not to get taken down and uh, defend the takedowns and go to work, you know, in the feet. De La Rosa, she has somehow to improve her striking. She could either throw straight punches or use the body kicks, I think would be the best, you know, to try to slow Bueno Silva's punches and uh, use the, she's a quite big girl for the division, use her size, use the body locks, you know, and uh, this girl is very strong on the first round, so she has to weather the storm. Montana La Rosa has to weather the storm because Mayra Bueno Silva is very strong in the first round and then, add a, uh, you know, uh, pick up the pace from the second. So my pick is Bueno Silva. I'm going to be picking her by round two TKO. This would be interesting prop bets in my opinion. You can pause the video here. I'm not going to read this not to extend too much. And also feel free to, you know, read these comments. I think they're worth your time. Alex uh, Caceres versus Kevin Kroom. Caceres is a veteran on the game, like, nearly 40 fights, even though he has quite a quite good amount of losses. He's uh, a complete fighter, well-rounded guy, you know, but he's nothing outstanding, so I'm giving him three stars on the strike, and he likes to, load, to throw long jabs, straight punches, can kick a little bit, long left hooks, you know. And the defensive is a little bit better because he's tough to hit, he's a little bit more active with the jab, and he's in the back foot. And uh, in, part of in terms of grappling, I'm giving him three stars in the offensive because he doesn't have much wrestling, not the best control in the cage. Defensively, he's not easy to take down, difficult to hold down, can create scrambles, so he's definitely four star here. 
decent game plans, quite good. Like I said, he's a veteran, very experienced, but not the best, you know, heart and will to win the fights, not the most powerful guy, not the strongest guy. So three stars for him here. Kevin Kroon, he's basically, I don't think he's even a bad striker, but it's easy to predict what he's gonna do. He's gonna try to, you know, come ball rushing, take the fight to the ground and, and go to work from there. So I'm giving him three stars in the def offensive and defensive part of the striking. Not much of a wrestler, even though, you know, likes to crash distance and, uh, you know, he can even pull guard, you know. He likes to, to bring to the ground, so I'm giving his three stars here. Could give even four on the offensive. I'm not giving because he doesn't have the consistency, even though he's very strong on the first. Then he, you know, fades pretty hard after the first round. So, like I said, it's predictable, so I'm giving his three stars, even though he has good experience. He has more experience than Caceres, at least in terms of amount of fights, but Caceres obviously in the UFC for a long time, this guy has high level experience. And uh, in terms of heart, I like uh, his heart, this guy pushes the pace, you know, not a, not a small guy, not the strongest, not the most powerful, but, you know, still he pushes the pace pretty much, so four star for him here. Caceres has to weather the storm, you know, be careful in the first round. Pick up the pace from the second, and uh, I would say for Caceres, you know, push the pace hard. There's a good chance he can finish in the second or on the third. Kevin Kroon has to use the straight punches, you know, uh, try to make this guy commit and then go for the body lock, not to lose his energy on the takedowns. Get his back. He's an excellent back taker, you know, from the back, go to work, get the chokes, and preserve the energy. If something doesn't go right, at least he has some energy to continue fighting. So the pick is uh, Caceres by decision. And in terms of a bet, I maybe I have Caceres on the round three. I'm sorry here, guys, because it, I forgot to update this. Yeah, look, this may be interesting for bets to take because um, Caceres has a good chance to finish him from the second round, and maybe Kevin Kroon on the first round. Probably that's what I have here, right? Yeah, submission on the first round or on the second round. Because uh, Kevin Kroon is very strong on the first round, all right? So take a look on this prop bet. So also feel free to pause here. You guys can read these comments. I think they help you to analyze the fight. Emily with Meyer versus uh, Hannah Cyphers. I'm giving three stars for with Meyer. I expect her to show up and I expect her to show up with great improvements. I like this girl's tenacity. Her will to win the fight. She has, she has the heart of a champion. So I like this girl a lot as a fighter. Still, I'm gonna be analyzing this technically. She's still three stars, comes in straight lines, not the best flow of movements, doesn't faint as much as she could, not much kicks. So I'm giving her a three on the offensive and defensive because she gets hit quite a lot, etc. But I expect her to improve on this fight. I think she's gonna show up with a four, four star, you know, striking. Let's see. In the terms of uh, grappling, she's a very good, you know, grappler. She's a good wrestler too. She's improving, but this is definitely her background. That's where she likes to, to take the fights. So I'm giving her four star here. I think she deserves it. In terms of game plan, and exp game plan is pretty good experience. Not so much. I'm giving her four, but in terms of tenacity, heart of a champion, she's a strong girl herself, decent power. I'm giving her five star here, right? Cyphers, she's, a, she's known as a boxer. I'm giving her three stars here. This may surprise some of you. The reason is she doesn't have much range, you know, in terms of volume, not much. She's basically an overhand girl, you know, she has a powerful overhand right, but that's pretty much it. She uses a lot on the defensive striking, especially. On the offensive, like I said, it's like jabs, some overhands, but not much range, not much kicking. I'm giving her three stars, I think it's pretty even on the striking, that's what I wanted to show here. In terms of grappling, I think we're going to see with Meyer dominating, she can fight to the ground. If she can take the fight to the ground, which I think she can. I don't like don't like much uh, Cypher's take down defense. She can, you know, get one under hook or another. But I think if she starts getting pressure, she's gonna get taken down. And uh, from the top, not that bad. From the bottom, doesn't have much, uh, not not much of a game. So expect uh, I'm putting two stars for her. She's pretty, you know, uh, predictable with the overhand. Not much. Skills rather than the boxing, I'm giving her three stars. I could give her four stars because of the power, but uh, she's a small girl, you know, in terms of height at least. You know, she's quite strong, you know, but still, I'm gonna go with three stars. I don't think she has much uh, size for the division, right? So, with Meyer has to faint, throw the right hand, and uh, bring the fight to the ground, use straight punches, lift the other hand again, you know, and Cyphers has to land the overhand, yeah, slips the, sh the shots, try to make 
her come, land the overhand, you know, defend the takes down, and uh, keep keep going with the uh, with the overhand. You know, it's her best uh, uh, weapon either way. All right. So like I said, my pick is with Meyer. I'm quite confident with this pick. I think she's gonna dominate the fight. I'll take this prop bets here, guys. I expect, like I said, with Meyer, be able to take this to the ground, and if not. On the feet, it's pretty even, even though Cypher has a little bit more power, all right? Spitfire, uh, Spitfire, that's her nickname. She's a little bit more dynamic, in my opinion, all right? So these are the comments. Feel free to pause here and take a look. With a Knight versus Alonso Minifield. Knight is a very strong guy, you can see by the picture, you know? But in terms of uh, technique, he comes with wide shots, you know? Even though he carries good power. It's quite predictable, to be honest, you know, not the best flow. Even though this guy is improving, I think he's very much committed to his career, which uh, which is interesting. But still, I'm going to be judging what I saw in the video, so this is uh, three stars for him. Grappling, I'm giving him four stars because he's very strong, you know. And uh, he can bring fights to the ground based on, on his strengths, he has a good body lock, he can try to take guys down with a double leg, with a single leg. He doesn't have the best wrestling technique, but from top he's also very big, very strong, stronger on the pound, can flow a little bit from top, so let's go for stars on the defensive part. He has a good uh, judo throws, not, not easy to hold this guy down, you know, so I'll give it four stars for him. Pretty good game, game plans, I'll give him that, you know, fights better than, uh, than his experience shows, so I'll give him four stars here. Very big, very tough guy, you know, he's gonna come for war, so he's definitely four star. Not giving five because he still has something to prove, all right? Alonso Minifield, known as a, a super powerful striker, I'm giving him four stars because he's nearly... Yes, he's four because he doesn't yet have the best technique, you know, he has yet to find his flow, his best uh, style, but he carries lots of power, has good, uh, you know, uh, swings, good overhands, you know, can jab here and there, can throw some volume, so still, I think four stars is very good. Defensive striking, not the best, gets hit quite a lot, even though he likes to stand the ground and bang. But uh, yeah, I think three stars is good enough. I'm giving him four stars on the clinch, because uh, on the clinch he's very strong, you know, like the way he holds guys there. He doesn't have, uh, even wrestling, you know, I saw him, I think I saw him taking a guy down or something, or at least who showed good potential. So still, I'm gonna give four, four star on the offensive, and then defensive part, he, not much his thing. He can sprawl, he can defend good under hooks, but once he gets to his back, he struggles a lot there. All right, improving his game plan as impressive as the sound. He used it to be just a power puncher. He showed uh, like a good flow against uh, OSP. So four star here, quite tough guy himself. Four star as well. All right. So guys, what Knight has to do? He has to hit an angle counter. Has to shoot, bring the fight to the ground. You know and. Um, yeah, I, I would say for him be careful in the clinch because I think Alonso Manifield is so strong in the clinch in terms of holding the position when he breaks he comes with power shots, I like it. So yeah, and uh, I think Knight should use lots of kicks, especially to the arms and to the head because he should try to slow those arms down. Manifield has to, uh, you know, wear on, on Knight, defend the takedowns, you know, make it a brawl, like a technical brawl at his best, you know, and uh, push hard for the second. Knight's a very strong guy on the first round. So I'll be going with many field by TKO. I think Nightmare is a guy that makes more mistakes on the feet, you know, and he struggles to get inside. I think many field gonna start landing with more power. But it's a tricky fight to call and to bet, guys. My bet on many field is very small, it's the least confident bet. So if you have William Knight, I don't blame you because really, like I said, I'm back on force here. But still, these are this is my pick, this is my bet, you know, many field, a small bet, and I would like to take a look on these prop bets as well, right? Always feel free to pause the video here and take a look on the comments. Justin Jacoby versus Maxine Brushing. Jacoby is a guy that uh, was on a long layoff from the UFC at least, he was like seven years out of the UFC, then he came back. Came back as a five-star striker, especially in the offensive part, very good kickboxer, you know, I like his flow of movements, good volume, good angles, straight, straight punches, leg kicks, you know, head kicks. So he found a very interesting style. He's a quite tall guy, you know, for a light heavyweight, maybe not that tall, but uh, you know, in general, 6'4". He also get, has quite a decent range, so he, he uses the flow very well. Five-star striking for him. On the defensive, also very good, very, very good. 
hit lots of angles, not easy to hit, composed, you know, but still some mistakes here and there, I'm giving him four, all right? Not too much grappling, he uses, uh, his grappling he basically uses to get out, to break the clinch, to stand back up and continue using his kickboxing. Even though he's a quite predictable uh, style, I think in the in the fight he does a good job of feinting, you know, impose his game plan, so four star for him here, and I like his toughness, he's a five star. Maxim Grishin, guys, it's not that easy for me to, to judge this, because this guy, he, he brings such a slow pace, you know, it's kind of weird, on the offensive striking, he basically doesn't have, sometimes he's stroll on strike here and there, but the volume is so low, you know, so I'm giving him two stars, because even though he has not bad technique, the volume is, is very low, and he doesn't have that much power, so I'll go with two. On the defensive, he's much better, you know, he likes uh, to use his jab, his overhand, tough guy to hit, you know, he, you know, he frustrates the guys, so I'll give him four stars on the defensive part. This part may surprise, I haven't seen much footage again, but I think three stars, it's a, it's a good enough, because he doesn't have the best wrestling, you know, he struggles to fight, bring the fight to the ground, even though the grappling seems to be quite good. I don't think he's too active either, you know, so three stars here. On the defensive, he's again a better counter-striker, a better uh, defensive fighter than his offensive. Pretty, pretty good game, pretty good uh, you know, experience, so experience is just ridiculous, you know. And uh, he adapts pretty well in the fights, even though I don't like his consistency, neither his game plan, so it's between three and four. And uh, he's definitely a guy that doesn't seem to care if he wins the fight, he always sits back and, uh, you know, lets the fight slip. But again, this guy is aggressive, this guy is a counter striker, so this is a good matchup. Alright, so Jacobi has to... Basically, I would like to see lots of calf kicks and head kicks, I think he uses that very well. You know, keep the range, you know, avoid the clinch and avoid the ground. And uh, I don't think Jacobi has to try to finish Grishin because this guy is very, very tough. And his experience is massive, he's a big guy for the division, so... I'd say for Jacob, you know, try to use, uh, you know, more technique, go to the ground, to the body a lot. Don't worry about finishing this guy, you know, because he may not finish and if he gets overtired, Grishin will capitalize. And Grishin has to, you know, has to take the, the taking the volume, you know, otherwise it's gonna be tough. I like, would like to see him bring the fight to the ground, you know, and use his size to his advantage. So my pick is Jacoby. I was tempted to bet Jacoby, but I'm gonna be passing on this. Maybe this prop bet may be interesting, all right? So, and Jacoby on the third round, no, yeah, Jacoby, jo Jacoby on the second may be interesting too, you know, and reaching on the third because Jacoby can slow down. All right, so you can pause the video here and uh, take a look on these comments, I think they're worth your time. Thiago Moises versus Alexander Hernandez. Great fight, These are, both are very complete, great fighters. Thiago Moses, I'm giving him four star on the defensive part because he doesn't have much volume. But when this guy, this guy goes, guys, this guy is legit. He has very good technique, good power, good speed. You know, good flow. He can go like you no know, straight punches. He can throw hooks. He can you know slip the counter, come with more head kicks, calf kicks. This guy is very complete. On the defensive, that's where he shines. You know, very tough guy to hit. Punches very well his opponent. You know, and so times the, the, the strike is at the right time. Again, on the offensive uh, grappling, he's pretty good, you know, but he doesn't use that enough. I'm giving four stars and five on the defensive. He's legit, you know, with a takedown defense, legit, uh, you know, BJJ player, black belt, high level guy, all right? I'm giving three stars here to show that his problem is the consistency, the game plan, you know, and uh, or could I even give four here and three here because I don't like much to his will, his heart on the fights, you know, even though he's a quite strong guy, not that tall, not that big, but he's still very young, like 25, so he's strong, he's, he's, strong, he's young, and uh, he's tough, all right? Alexander Hernandez, you can see by the picture how explosive this guy is, how, you know, okay, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, all right? So just to comment, he's a super strong, you know, powerful and explosive guy, big will, big heart, that's why he's five star here. And uh, pretty good game plans and uh, excellent cardio. So, but not much experience and uh, yeah. So he's improving actually the game plan. That's why he's four here. All right. So on to the, the the technical part. Offensive striking, giving him four. It's a little bit generous to be honest. He's quite predictable, even though he's trying to adapt that. Most recently, he's using better straight punches, trying to be more technical. He's to be just an explosive guy from the outside. 
So I'm giving him four stars also expecting that he's gonna continue you know, showing up his improvements here. Defensively not the best, gets hit quite a lot, you know, even though he stays on the outside quite a bit, but uh, when once he starts trading, he gets hit, he doesn't have the... He has a quite good chin actually, but he, his chin was test, tested a couple of times, so that's why he got three stars here. Pretty good grappling on the defensive part, good wrestler, you know, I like his grappling too. On the defensive, also very good, you know, very tough guy to take down, but not that super technical on the, on the ground. So that's why I'm giving him four star here. All right. So Moses has to uh, make make this guy miss, you know, then come with the right hand, calf kicks, lots of uh, kicks to the arms. He's the better grappler. I don't think Hernan is going to want to grapple with Moses. I may be wrong here, but I don't think Hernan is going to want to grapple with Moses. And I would like to see Moses take him down. All right. And Hernandez, uh, make him throw, explode after that, you know. And all in or all, don't trade technique for technique with Moses. And make it a dog fight if something doesn't go right. All right. Moses is my pick. It's quite a decent pick. I don't like, like I said, I don't like much this guy's heart. But I think this matchup, oops. I think this matchup uh, favors him a little bit because... Uh, Hernandez is gonna bring it and uh, Moises is, the, is a better counter striker and the better overall fighter So I'm picking Moses and I'm gonna be betting Moses. I like the lines, you know, at plus 165 And uh, yeah, a live bet on Moses would be amazing because this guy is very strong on the first round and he tends to fade a little bit All right, and um, Yeah, I think I forgot to add here The round betting for Thiago Moses. Give me a second here Yeah, I think this round betting for Moses would be good because like I said the Alexander Hernandez he's a guy that is very strong on the first and he tends to slow down so take a look on this prop bets here for for these guys all right Oops, Okay, and always feel free to pause the video here. You guys can read the comments, all right? Okay, Magomed Kalaev versus Nikita Krylov. I'm giving three stars for Ankalaev in the offensive part. The reason is he doesn't throw enough. He's a quite passive guy. He likes to counter better. On the counter part, tough guy to hit. Very good kicks, good jabs, you know. He's a tall guy, so also tough to hit because of that, you know. Quite decent range. Actually, his arms not that long, but the legs are. And he used the kick very well, all right? So he has a good flow here. In terms of grappling also, you know, pretty good. Good sambo wrestling. I'm giving him four star because he doesn't use that enough. Five on the defensive, super tough guy to, you know, grab a hold of, take down, hold down. You know, he can also grapple from his back. So I'm giving him five star here. Pretty good game plans, you know. And uh, But I don't like much his toughness. He's, he's quite tough, actually. I like his toughness, but doesn't have the best uh, heart. And will to win the fight, that's why I'm giving him three star. Could be giving him four because he's strong, he's young, you know. So yeah, let me put four stars here. And uh, Nikita Krylov, he's a guy that uh, on the striking part he's improved quite a bit, but still lags a little bit behind in terms of technique. He likes to, he still comes in straight lines, chin is up, you know. Even though he's trying to improve, he's a very big guy for the division, very very strong, you know, quite long guy. So I could give like three and a half stars on the offensive, especially. Defensively, gets hit quite a lot, so three stars is enough. Pretty good wrestler, actually, you know. Not pretty good wrestler, he's a decent wrestler. But, um, yeah, likes technique, you know, and uh, he, he doesn't time it well. I think this is the problem, you know. He goes, he, he's kind of unorthodox, he goes with some weird movements at weird times, you know. So I'm gonna give him three on the offensive and defensive, all right? And in terms of, uh, I like this guy, his cardio is, a, is very good, you know, it's a near elite. And um, pretty decent game plan, he's, ex he's improving, experienced, despite the fact that uh, his experience comes outside of the UFC. He has quite a lot of fights, but he doesn't show up, you know, like a veteran or something. But this guy is, a, like I said, very strong, young, very powerful, and uh, has big heart and will win the fights, right? So Ankalaev has to use his technique. You no, know, I'd like to see him take him to the ground, all right, and use the the kicks. Now Krylov has to use his superior size basically in his strengths. 
get inside, you know, make it a dog fight, make it a brawl, push hard from the second, you know, and uh, yeah, defend the takedowns. I think he has to keep it standing and make it a dog fight. The pick is in Kalaev. And uh, in terms of a bet, take a look on this prop bets, in my opinion, I think it's the best way to go to this fight, right? And feel free to pause here. Randy Brown versus Alex Oliveira. Brown is a guy that is very tall, very long guy, you know, good striking, you know, I like his flow, his long one twos, his leg kicks, deep kicks. I'm not giving five star because he's yet to find the best technique. He uses a little bit too much limbs when he strikes, which doesn't translate too much power. But um, yeah, four stars, definitely worth it for him. Also very tough guy to hit, punches very well his opponent, so four star here. On terms of grappling, he's improving quite a bit, you know. He tried to, to use more clenching, more wrestling, more grappling. He's still developing there, but still, I, it's three and a half star defensively. Quite tough guy to take down, not easy to hold down, can throw some submissions, so four star. Good game plans, you know, he's improved quite a bit there, you know, doesn't have the m much experience I'm giving him for, but a very tough, young, you know, big guy for the division, so 5-star here. Alex Oliveira, another very strong guy for the division, so offensive striking, I'm giving him 3. He, he also tried to adapt his style a little bit, he used to be like a, a guy that leaped inside and used his superior physical strengths, you know. But uh, he tried to be a little bit more technical in his last fight. This didn't quite work for him. But still, let's see. I'm going to give him three. Not that easy to hit. You know, actually, when the opponent comes, he throws such powerful, you know, uppercut in the left hook. And this guy is so massive. His bones are so giant, you know. And uh, such long limbs. Very athletic guy. So it shines on the defensive part because it's tough to hit him. He throws back at you. And he's so strong, you know. So I'm giving him four here. And the clinch part, he's also used it to be, you know, more like a pressure guy. I like when he was using the grinding style, tried to use more technique on the last fight. Still, I'm gonna go with four here and four here because he's very tough to take down, tough to hold down, all right? Pretty decent game plans, you know. Yeah, I think overall his experience and his cardio show up more than anything. And uh, like I said, very strong, not that young anymore, you know, but very strong, very powerful, very tough, big guy for the division, all right? Brown has to use the more tech, technical boxing. You now be careful with the calf kicks. If he starts eating calf kicks, he's gonna lose the fight again. I think he lost to to Vincent Luque. Vincent Vicente, yeah, Vicente Luque. Because uh, of the way he 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 ate those kicks, you know. I think if he had checked that the kicks, he would have won. I had a bet on him, so I lost the, the bet. But still, I think he's uh, if he checks the like kicks, if I'm sure that he's gonna be ready for this, I would even put a bet on Brown. But still, let's see. And I would say for him to break free from the clinch, Oliveira is a guy that has to, you know, use the calf kicks, get inside, you know, make it ugly and use his physical power. Oliveira by round three would be the pick. Yeah, actually, no. I think I would put a bet on this, you know. But uh, the pick, like I said, it's brown. And I would say for, I would take brown by decision. Probably I was, you know, back and forth in here and didn't update the slide. All right, and always guys, feel free to pause here, take a look on these prop bets in the read the comments, okay? Raoni Barcelos versus Rafael Sanson. High, high level fight. I'm very excited for this fight, all right? So the thing is that Barcelos, I'm giving four stars on the offensive. This may surprise because he has such a good flow with the, with the, with his striking. I'm giving four because he doesn't have the best power, you know, and I don't think he faints uh, as much as he could and he's not that long, so I'm giving four. All right, even though he has such a great volume, he's a very aggressive guy. He's very dangerous with the flying knees too, you know. So this guy is, you know, is, he's elite on the striking, don't get it wrong. Defensive, I think he can get hit, you know, because he's so good on this, the offensive part. He doesn't quite uh, worry about the defense. He holds the ground, can get hit quite a bit, all right. I'm giving five stars definitely on the, on the wrestling and the clinching and the grappling. This guy's an elite BJJ player. Awesome game plans, awesome experience, cardio. This guy will come ready 100%. And a super tough guy, you know, super tough. He doesn't have much strength and size. So let me give him four stars here just to shine that. But uh, the heart and the will is definitely there. All right. Asun Song, I don't like his uh, offensive striking because basically he doesn't throw enough. Even though, even though his 
I think it was two fights ago. I forgot who against that was. He came with an interesting, you know, uh, forward movement, moving the head, trying to be a boxer. I like that. I would like to see more from that, from him. But still, he, his forte is the defensive striking. Super tough to hit, you know, powerful overhands, left hooks when the guy gets inside. Can go to the body. Lots of, you know, powerful leg kicks, calf kicks. He's going to throw head kicks. This guy is an elite counter striker. And grappling, again, it's the same as Barcelos, guys. These guys, I would love to see them grappling because it's such a high level BJJ fight here. And uh, also good wrestler himself, right? And the defensive part, extremely difficult to take down, hold down, can sweep, can throw submissions, five star hand down. And uh, I don't like his game plans. The problem that I have is uh, Asunção because he, he basically fights on the back foot and this costs his, him the fight, so I'm giving four here. But a uh, very strong guy, you know, very powerful. Doesn't have the use, so that's why he's not five stars here. And also doesn't have the wheel on the heart, so between three and a half to four, all right? So Barcelos has to, uh, man, he has to fight, you know, the way he does because this guy is not gonna make, make many mistakes. I think the best would be to faint, you know, try to uh, basically do what he does, all right? And Asunção has to, I would like to see an uptake on the volume, to be honest, you know, and uh, he's a little bit more physical. I think he has the better chin and uh, yeah, actually, actually he can frustrate Barcelos and make Barcelos come to him, which is very likely. I think this matchup favors him a little bit, you know, I'm still going to be going with Barcelos because, you know, Asunção is not a young guy anymore. He's 38 or something, right? What I have here, yeah, 38. So the pick is Barcelos by decision. I'd say the the best bet would be on Asunção as a live bet to see whether Barcelos wins the first round because he's very strong there. And if Asunção doesn't take much damage, I think he's a live dog, all right? And uh, I'll take this prop bets here and I have I'll probably put a straight bet on Asunção as well. So I'm picking Barcelos, but betting Asunção, this could be very close, guys. Like I said, I'm not putting more money on Asunção because of his age. But still, this guy, I think he's going to show up and uh, this is going to be a close fight. All right. Sabino Masso versus Alexis Davis. Masso is a big, you know, long girl. Very, very good striker. She's an elite striker. You know, she has the range and she uses amazingly. She has, you know, good jabs, straight punches, long kicks, you know, calf kicks. She has good technique behind those, you know, she she's patient. She hits angles, so she's definitely five stars, hands down, both of these things. He's a very tough girl to hit, punches very well, good power. On the grappling part, she's evolving pretty pretty nicely. I'm giving four stars because she's very strong on the clinch, tough to take down, tough to hold down, all right? So it could be like three and a half, maybe because we, I need to highlight that Alexis Davis is, a, is better there. But still, she's, she's very strong and she's evolving rapidly. And like I said, you know, yeah, good game plans. I like her consistency. She doesn't have much experience, but she shows up as a veteran. Five stars here, five stars here, hands down. All right. Like I said, big girl, you know, tough, strong heart to win the fights. And Alexis Davis is a, is an, uh, a high level fighter herself. She, you know, has the volume, has the technique on the on the striking. Doesn't have much range, so that's why she's not five star. Doesn't have much power, but she has a good flow in her attacks. You know, good straight punches. Can get inside. Can throw hooks. Can use kicks. Not easy to hit. Punches very well as opponent. She's definitely four star here. Don't sleep on this girl. She's a very good fighter. Like I said, she's the more technical, especially in the BJJ. I think I'm not giving her five because I didn't see much uh, wrestling. Neither the best timing on these things, you know, but still, she's very, very good, you know, she's a high level BJJ player. Awesome game plans, she brings it, she will bring in this fight, I have 100% I have, uh, sure she will bring it, but uh, she doesn't have the use anymore, she's not the strongest, not the biggest girl, all right? So Mazo, do what she does, use the kickboxing, you know, don't grapple with this girl, explode out, I think she'll be able to do it because she's so young, she's so strong and this girl's 23, it's just ridiculous and Davis, she has to push the pace, you know, get inside and make it a dog fight, make this girl, you know, uh, swim in deep waters and try to impose her game plan, so the pick is Mazo by decision, I would almost went with TKO, but I think Mazo at these props, you may find these lines you know, I think definitely it's worth some money here, 
because Mazo, she's so, you know, like I said, so strong, so sharp with the hands, you know, and Davis at some point gonna start taking so much damage that it's gonna be ridiculous. But uh, if you like Davis, I say by decision is the best, but like I said, she's gonna push the pace, so gonna be interesting test for Sabine and Mazo as well. All right, so always feel free to pause here, read the comments, I think they're worth your time. Zero Gain versus Jairzinho Rosenstrike in the main event. Guys, Gain is a guy that is so, you know, big and strong, athletic, you know, you can see by the picture even. On the offensive, not giving five stars because he doesn't have much volume, but this guy is a, is a kickboxer by nature or, or a tie fighter, one of the two, but still he does pose very well. Good straight punches, good, uh, you know, kicks, good flow of attacks, rangy guy. He's better on the defense because he's super tough to hit. When guys start thinking of hitting him, he get he hit, hit the guy two times already. He's definitely an elite uh, counter puncher, but on the offensive part, when this guy goes, it's scary too. I'm not giving five because he doesn't have much volume. Could use the jab way more, but still, he's uh, very good there, right? On the grappling part, he's not uh, too much down, you know, he can uh, throw double legs from the top, he can float a little bit, land strong ground and pound, still not an elite wrestler or grappler, and a tough guy to take down, hold down, etc. All right? And a super, yeah, I think actually, yeah, between four and five stars here on the on the consistency on the game plan, even though he, he's a very, quite young guy, 30 years old, not many fights, but still he shows up as a veteran, only seven fights actually. Shows up as a veteran, but uh, let's give him four star here. I think it was too generous giving five. But on the no other part, definitely five. He's a very big, tough guy. You know, quite good will to win the heart, win the fights. So between four and five here. Okay, Rosen Strike, good on the offensive part. I'm not giving five for the same reason. Not enough volume, but when this guy goes, also scary, great power. He, he also, he's very athletic, he likes to use uh, you know, knees, flying knees, elbows inside, you know, straight punches, wicked overhand, so yeah, four star here. Defensively, he's not the best, stands the ground, gets hit quite a lot, you know, so it's a definitely a huge gap here. Offensively and, and the defensive grappling, not the best, not much his thing, he doesn't like to grapple, even though the clinch game is pretty decent, but doesn't like much grappling. And uh, I don't like much his game plans, to, to be honest. It's very predictable what he's going to do. And he doesn't have the best, uh, you know, output in the fight. I'm giving three here and four here because he's a quite a big guy, you know, very powerful. But still four is even quite generous for him, all right? So game has to use the range, be more technical, you know. And, uh, yeah, be careful the overhand, don't back up straight. Hit the angles, that's what he does, you know. That's why I think he's a strong favorite here. Rosen strike has to make him... Come explode, you know, land the overhand, make it a dog fight, and uh, you know, try to corral him and tee off. Okay, so the pick is gained by decision. Mm, yeah, by decision, a five round fight. I think I'm gonna change my pick. I think he was in a, in a three round fight. So I'm gonna go with a gain, maybe around uh, what, round three TKO, round two. I don't know, something like this. Okay, and uh, yeah, I copied this from another. So gain TKO plus 600. Let me see if I have it right here. Yeah, guys, so give me a second because they moved this fight. I'm gonna update this. One second, all right? All right, so here I, here it is, I fixed. So the biggest gain, I'll go with round three TKO. I would like to take this prop bets if I can find them. You know, I think this is gonna be nearly impossible, but maybe here you may find some of these, you know, bets here. I think it would be worth it. All right, I also added here, guys, to to the spreadsheet, I'm I'm, got, oh, I'm already taking a bet on um, gain. I think he's such a strong favorite. I'm gonna be putting 1.25% of my money, parlaying him with other guys, all right? So yeah, I added this one here now. Okay, so just to wrap this up, the bets will be gain like we just spoke, you know, 1.25% of my money, just parlaying him there. Tiago Moses, 2.25% of my money. I think it's a quite good bet. Emily Whitmire, this is the best bet in the in the card, in my opinion, I have it as a medium quality bet. Rafael Sanson, I expect uh, to be a good bet as well. I expect to be a very close fight, you know, so it could go either way, in my opinion. So even though I'm picking Barcelos, I'm going to be betting a Sanson. William Knight versus Alonso Manyfield. I'm picking uh, and betting Manyfield, but very small 
amount because I'm not too confident on Alonso midfield. All right. In terms of results, guys, it's going to be repeating the same because I'm recording this on 30th of January, so uh, the February, the, the beginning of the February fights hasn't yet t taken place. But still, as of now, uh, this is how I am for this year. For the last year, this was the results. Take a look on the video. There is uh, in the description if you would like to see 2020 results. And uh, the last fight in C2257, I lost nearly 3.5% of my money or 43% of a loss uh, on the overall money of the card, all right? And uh, in terms of high, medium, and low confidence bets, I'm, uh, I'm behind on the medium one. You know, and I'm positive on the low confidence bets, and obviously I put more low than medium. Okay, so this is how it is in terms of these charts. I don't have any high for the year. Medium, I'm behind 1.3 percent, and I up, I'm up on this low, three percent of my money, and this overall it is like uh, nearly 38 percent profit, 37.09 percent profit for the year. If I'm counting, you know, per event, some in on events. All right, and this is in a more visual manner. How it is you know so in terms of return of investment for the previous year or 60 percent and overall from the start of the channel 63.41 percent in eight months okay so yeah guys again i hope you enjoyed if you did please like subscribe let me know how you're betting the fight or please let me know your picks you know and uh, again i have uh, the patreon account i have the the paypal account for international donations if you feel like i'm helping you guys with your analysis, uh, uh, you know, maximizing the profits or reducing the losses. So always feel free to, you know, give me an extra here and there. And uh, yeah, this will do for this video, guys. And uh, again, please like and subscribe. If not, I'll see you next time. This is Rodermi Bet, bringing the best, most consistent and transparent betting strategy for you.